Hello, boxing fans. I'm James Smith in this corner. Welcome back to Canastota, New York International Boxing Hall of Fame 2015, brought to you by Mexico. Check out visitmexico.com. Live it to believe it. And by the WBC. Fantastic Saturday here in Canastota at the, at the hall. The weather's holding out. Tomorrow's the big induction ceremony. We had a great day today. We sat down with inductee Ray Boom Boom Mancini. Also, referee extraordinaire Steve Smoger, who also climbed inside the squared circle with us and did a uh, in-ring demonstration showing the skills that make him, well, now a Hall of Fame referee. Also, Amir Khan uh, jumped inside the ring here in Canastota for the fans and in this corner. And as always, we were joined by a plethora of pugilistic greats here at the hall. You know, the jab is the best, best punch, I believe, in boxing. It'll get you in range, it'll get you out of trouble, and it'll get you, you know, uh, to throw a combination. So if, I, if we fight in each other now, or if I don't know how far you are from me, so I'll just shoot the jab out. First of all, I'll shoot you out to see how far you are from me. Now, if my jab's not going to land, then my right hand's not going to land. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move around, I'm going to flick that jab out, keep you, keep you for, keep you thinking something's coming. Even jab to the body now and then, which works very well for me, that's going to bring your hands down. If I shoot that jab, I can come back up with the right hand. Um, I can faint. So the jab is keeping you busy. And then I might even shoot a hard jab when you don't expect it. Knock because off balance. Really knock good. you off balance, but it's going to hurt you as yeah. well. Obviously, when you hit someone with a good clean jab, like, boom, it's going to stop you. From, it's going to stop you where you are. It's going to knock you off balance, but then it's going to give me a target to hit. I'm going to hit you with the right hand, left hook. You know, so um, the jab is a key. If you have a good jab, if any fighter here, any guy who's an amateur boxer or a professional fighter, if you use the jab well, I think you can win any fight. Muhammad Ali had a great jab. Sugar and Lender had a great jab. Floyd Mayweather has a great job. It's all about having a good job because it gets you out of trouble and gets you to throw good punches. I was coming back from a bout in St. Martin. I'm at Newark Airport waiting for my bag on the conveyor and the phone rings. It's Ed Brophy. He said, congratulations. Uh, you've been selected for induction. I almost fell on the Rolodex. I had to keep myself steady. I said, I can't believe it. He said, now look, Steve, this is not for publication. It's coming out at the end of the week. I said, my lips are sealed. I'll do whatever you You're say. You're a loquacious guy. Uh, that yeah, had to be yeah, hard. Really, really hard. But in that instance, I understood it. And it was receiving the Emmy, the Oscar, and the Nobel Peace Prize all in one for someone in our game. And it's, it's an honor that it's still it's sinking in now because of the way Canastota treats people. Ed Brophy and his staff are exceptional, absolutely exceptional. The care for me, my family, friends, the events, it's, it's more than I ever expected and I'm truly honored. One of the great things with fighters or the see, uh, that makes them so great are the things you can't see and that's right. the ability to recover exactly. and fight on another round and you're one of the best at letting and knowing when and when not to stop a fight. So let's talk about a little bit about that. Uh, when a guy's on the ropes, right. getting hit, uh, and I'll let you take us through it. And I'll be on the ropes, <coughs> covering up. Right. You cannot be fooled by a shoe shine. You've got to absorb the receiving fighter. You visualize his eyes, and I call it his overall presence. Right now, Smitty's good. No signature punches come up. If Hank comes up the middle and hurts Smitty, then I, got, then I got to go in and I want to see if you can respond. If not, I'm in. If not, I'm in. If this, a lot of guys today and girls, they'll be fooled by the volume of punches. If they're not landing, and you, sir, have so accurately, if you're defending, I have to give you the opportunity to fire back, the Smitty rule. Yeah. Fire back. Yeah. So if you have the ability to fire back, I'm going to give you that opportunity. Yeah, you know, that what, what gets to me sometimes is they'll say, show me something, show me something. But if you have a fighter like a Ray Mancini, mm, right. who's got a guy against the ropes and, and can throw 30 punches in a row, right. and the guy's blocking 
28 of those or right. 29, he can't fire back exactly. because he's blocking the shot. So, again, it must be a very instinctive thing right. and, and just uh, maybe a God-given You hope, thing. and a lot of things today, very, very important. Ladies and gentlemen, we're with the most gallant warriors in the world. They'll be taking shots, and I say in my heart, take a knee, drop, recoup. Instead of me stopping it, the eight count, which I loved, I love the standing eight. I used it as a tool. That's out now. So I would say they're so valiant, I'm not going to take a knee. Take a knee, recoup, and come back. They don't do it. So I hope that they circle out and get away from the barrage, regroup, and then go. Yeah, so that's so, almost a message to fighters out there. Yeah, please. That because of the way uh, things and, and, and rules change in the NFL, NBA, and national. So what you're saying for a fighter is uh, watch some of these guys that are slippery and like a Mayweather know how to get off the ropes. Exactly. And move. Please listen. Get if you're getting absorbing, move. If I see you have the ability to move, I know that you're you know you're there. You still have your senses. So that's how we. How, that's how I frame that. My mom and dad are with me. I'll, you know, my, my mom, my dad passed in two, my mom 2002, my dad 2003. But during the day, they're not with me. You know what I'm saying? So, um, when I got the call in November that I was on the ballot, early November I was on the ballot, and they said to me, I, I really, and I mean sincerely, I thought at that to me I made it to even be considered because I didn't think my career warranted it. Not only because of longevity. I only fought five and a half years as a pro, and you know most people. It's longevity that gets them to the Hall of Fame. I didn't fight that long, so I didn't think, and that was, you know, I, and I felt I had great fights, great moments, and I considered myself a great fighter. And again, no false modesty, because greatness is acquired over longevity. But when the reporter called to let me know that I had made it, when I got the call that I actually made it into the Hall of Fame, I was like stunned. I really was. You know, I said, I, I got stunned harder, I got stunned, I was stunned more than in an Aguayo right hand. You know what I mean? <laughs> And I said, because I, I just didn't think what happened, but to be considered was beautiful. But he's, I said the same thing I told you. I said, I didn't think my career warranted it. He said, no, no, no. I said, let me tell you something. You're part of the early 80s. In that group, he said, you guys brought boxing back into the homes of everybody, into the, uh, in the homes, on, you know, the family homes. And he said, I don't think HBO or Showtime, certainly not pay-per-view, would, would even be exist now if it wasn't for guys like you. You were part of a group of Ray Leonard, uh, 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 Alex Arguello, Aaron Pryor, Tommy Hearns, he's Duran. Roberto Duran. Yeah. He said, if it wasn't for you guys, boxing wouldn't be what it is. He said, even though your career was long, he said, it was a quality of your fights, not the quantity of your fights. I said, I'll take it. Yet another esteemed inductee, Nigel Collins. Congratulations. Thanks a lot, Smitty. It's a great day for me. <laughs> What did you feel like? Uh, take us back to when you, you found out you were going to be enshrined here. Well, it's kind of interesting because this was the first year I was on the ballot. And I was talking to my friend and colleague, Eric Raskin. He was looking over the people and he said, you might not make it this year, but I think next year. So I thought, well, that makes sense. You know, nobody, not many people make it the first year. So I knew the announcement was coming up, but I didn't really expect to get in. And then when Ed Brophy calls, you know why he's calling before he says a thing. So it wasn't a total surprise, but I was expecting maybe to have to wait another year, who knows too. But it's a strange thing, Smitty. When something like that happens, you don't really know how to react. You know, you're happy, but you don't want to brag. So it's, it's one of the best thing. There's two things I think I really like about it. Number one, I was voted in by my peers. And so that means I must have done some good work. And number two, this might sound kind of corny, but having that plaque hanging there is as close as I'm going to ever get to immortality. And to know that that's going to be on there a long time after I'm gone, there's something cool about that. I, I don't, it's just, those are the two things that really uh, sort of touch me. It's great to be in Kansas City, New York at the Hall of Fame, uh, you know, uh, it's always such excitement to be here, you know, because you get to run into all the great champions from the past, the present, you know, future guys that are here, you know. I just met, met Amir Khan for the first time, and, uh, you know, and then rope elbows with the guys from the 80s and the 70s. They just, you know, you don't, get a, you don't get a chance to hang out with, you know, these guys very often because you're all spread out all over the country. So to be here for the whole weekend and, 
you know, we get to have drinks together, and reminisce, talk, talk about you know great fights and you know and, and fights without with, hitting each other. Without hitting each other, and, and with Amir, you know, with Amir, you know, he's a you know future guy, you know, looking for that big fight with uh, with Mayweather, and it's just it's really exciting to be here. Explain the special camaraderie. I think all sports have them. But boxing is certainly unique. I always call fighters the most common and uncommon of all athletes. What is that special camaraderie when you sit down with other guys uh, like yourself? And the great thing is the respect level. It doesn't matter whether it was a little four-round fighter like me or an all-time great like you. There's just this, this bond. Well, yeah, you know, I, and I think it's because of what we do. You know, I mean, you know, football players, basketball players, you know, baseball players, you know, nobody is in the ring trying to take your head off, you know, and, and, and then you know because of what you did in preparation for that encounter against someone else, you know what they went through too. And then, and then it, you know, it's like uh, people told me when I, went, when I started acting, well, you know, and I started taking classes as, as an actor, they, well, you got to open yourself up. You got you to gotta expose yourself. And, you know, I thought to myself, well, how can I expose myself more than what I did in the ring? I mean, I mean, cause that's your, you open yourself you're up, you're naked, your soul is out, you know, and you're in the middle of, of, of the square circle with, against another guy who, you know, competing at, at the best level that you can. And, and it's, you know, it's something you get dropped and how, you know, you're in front of thousands of people, in front of millions of people watching you on TV and you're right there on the floor. You know, how more exposed can you be? So, so yeah, and that, that respect comes from that, I think. You know, it's like one of my best friends right now is Armando Muniz, who I, would, I had two wars with, two 15-round wars. And, you know, my, our wives are best friends, we're best friends, because it's just that respect for understanding that you gave your all, you, you opened up yourself, you gave your heart. And, and, uh, and you competed against each other at, at the top level, and, uh, uh, and you're still standing. Uh, this is actually my, I think I missed two years since 2002. I fought a Toro in 2002, and I fought him in May, and I come up here in June 2002. In 2003, I was fighting him on the weekend of this, so I didn't make it, and I've been here ever since, just about every year. So I, I think I've come like 10 years now. Yeah. And it's, you know, there's no place better to be if you're a boxing fan than here yeah. on this weekend. And, uh, you know, as long as, even if the, the weather doesn't, you know, cooperate with you, it's such, still such a great time, you know what I mean? Just seeing the old-time fighters, uh, the current fighters, and the, the fans are incredible, you know. Uh, and a lot of them are very knowledgeable about the game and stuff. They come from all over the, all over the world, you know, so it's just great to see that those same faces again throughout the 10 years, you know, and they're still coming. Yeah. And that's great. Dickie, what about you? You have some fun here every time I see you. You start, you're becoming a, a regular here. You have a whole new fan base. Uh -huh. Talk about your, your thoughts on Canastota and the International Boxing Hall No, it's Hall great because they love boxing and I love boxing. You know what I mean? I still train the kids all every day at back home. On Sundays, we run Fort Hill. There's this hill that Mickey used to run. You know, I still take them up there on a Sunday. But um, I see these people love boxing. That's what I love. Yeah. They're, they're, die, they're die hard fans for boxing. Ruben Oliveris. Uh, thank you. 1991 inducted a, a fan favorite, a Mexican favorite, a great fighter. What does the Hall of Fame mean to you? Es la fama de ti. Eso significa mucho. Significa un reconocimiento para los peleadores que se entregaron, pelearon de verdad con peleadores contrarios buenos y y que gracias a al Salón de la Fama Ed Profi, que es el presidente que nos tiene aquí. To me, the Hall of Fame is a testament to all the great fighters, all the great champions, and I want to thank Ed Profi for bringing us out here and keeping the Hall of Fame going on. You know, there's a, um, a camaraderie, a bond with fighters like no other sport when you guys come together, whether it's you with somebody you fought, another great champion or a four-round fighter that, that's here in attendance, the bond between fighters, because you don't play boxing like other sports, fighters fight. What's, tell, talk about that bond. Boxeadores tienen una amistad. Cuando ves un rival aquí, son amigos. Si fue en un pelea campeonato, una pelea de cuatro rounds. ¿Por qué es una amistad entre boxeadores? Porque... Somos boxeadores, somos profesionales, peleamos arriba del ring. We're boxers, we're professionals. We met up in the, inside the ring. 
y ya abajo ya es otra cosa. Off the ring, it's another thing. Ya este, hola, ¿cómo estás? We hug each other, even a kiss maybe. <laughs> Why not? Un beso rico de amigos, de profesionales, de campeones. A friendship of, uh, of fellow boxers, of champions. Y, y además somos uh, seres humanos como cualquier otro. We're, we're just human beings like any, everybody else. And you talked right in the beginning when we did the show about uh, your father. What would he be thinking Sunday if he was watching you being inducted? Uh, as uh, the only son, uh, the, the, the love that he had for the sport, to see it flow down to me, uh, a kid from the inlet in New Jersey, to uh, be enshrined, um, it, there'd be no, you know, I'm having a difficulty with the words, but uh, he would just be beyond, he was beyond himself. Rounder at the Tropicana, what would he be today? You know, he, he would be as we, as you should be, as you are, as we all are, very proud. You're in the International Boxing Hall of Fame. Congratulations, my friend. You, you push the button, boy. You push the, you know how to do that. You're pushing the button, brother.